It's theory time. Alrighty, welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII theory video. Before we get into today's theory, let's talk about last time's theory. Last time, we talked about Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy X potentially being connected, and a lot of people left comments saying, Death, it's already been confirmed. Didn't you see this interview from two years ago? Now, first of all, the point of these videos isn't necessarily to call a theory true or false. It's more about to talk about it. So if there's some great evidence for or against the theory, I love to share that and let everyone discuss it. These videos are more about the community coming together to talk about these theories and just talk about Final Fantasy VII, not to prove one way or the other whether or not these theories are true. However, let's talk about this interview for a second because I said in my video specifically that interviews are never cut and dry, 100% proof, yay or nay, on a theory. You know, you never know what kind of interview it is, you never know what kind of state the interviewee is in, maybe they completely remember everything about the development cycle, maybe they don't, maybe they misremember some things, maybe some people on the team believed one thing and some people on the team believed another thing. There's just way too many things that interviews do not account for. They certainly help with theories, yay or nay, but it's never 100% proof. So, for people to leave this comment in my video like crazy telling me for certain that this video completely proves this theory, this must mean that Yoshinori just knew, like right away he was just like, bam, there it is, everyone agreed on it. This must have been an interview that just showed without a doubt that Yoshinori always knew that Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy X were connected. Here's the thing. In the video, he says the scenario writer suggests that he might have something to do with the Shinra company in Final Fantasy VII. That's exactly what I showed in my video. That big text thing that I read, remember? That's what he's referencing. Now, some of you might have thought that that theory was old and ancient. And again, this series is more about talking about Final Fantasy VII in general. I'm not trying to show off my awesome Final Fantasy VII knowledge by giving you some hot theories that no one's ever thought of. But in that vein, let's talk about an awesome new theory that none of you have ever thought of. Today's theory is based on a finding that was only found a couple months ago by resident Final Fantasy VII expert Zero Kinos, the hidden Black Materia in the Icicle Inn. Now, I already made a video showing off the Black Materia and a few of the findings that I found myself, so if you want to check that out, it's down in the description below. Long story short, Zero found a Black Materia model hidden in the weapon shop in Icicle Inn. It's there, but turned off and was never removed from the code. I also found that the chest in the weapon shop can be opened with a command that was also removed from the game. So this leaves us with the obvious question. Why is it there? Was it just a placeholder for something else? Is there a reason that the chest opens up but there's nothing in it? Was the black materia supposed to be in the chest and it was supposed to be an item that we could collect? I would love to hear your theory as to why this black materia model was hidden but never removed from the game. I have my own interesting theory though. I think that sometime within the development of the plot, Ifalna was going to have both the holy materia and the black materia. She would have given the Holy Materia to Eris, but kept the Black Materia for herself for safekeeping. If you remember, Ifalna and Professor Gast lived in Icicle Inn for some extended period of time. And if Ifalna knew that the Shinra were going to one day catch up with them, she would have tried to hide the Black Materia any way she could. Perhaps the old man weapon shop owner was the most unassuming person to hold on to the Black Materia. If this idea was developed either before the Temple of the Ancients was created or before they decided to place the Black Materia in the Temple of the Ancients, it wouldn't actually affect the game too much. Cloud and the gang would still have gotten the Black Materia before getting to the North Crater, but instead of getting it in the Temple, they would have gotten it at Icicle Inn somehow. Perhaps the original idea was that lab that you get all the side story about Professor Gast in was originally going to be mandatory. And in one of those recordings, Afalna lets you know that she left the Black Materia with the Weapons Keeper. The other thing that strikes me about this theory is the confrontation with Elena. I always thought that this scene was super weird. The fact that there's no fight and she just kind of tries to punch you and then rolls down the mountain. The way that she's so angry about Sang, even though it's kind of obvious that Sephiroth attacked him and not Cloud. But it would make a lot more sense if this scene was originally a fight that had something to do with the Black Materia. 
and afterwards they had to quickly change it to have something to do with the Temple of the Ancients since that's where you actually get the Black Materia. Maybe originally, instead of the Turks going to the Temple of the Ancients to get the Black Materia, they follow Cloud around until he finds it. So once they find it in the Icicle Inn, the Turks spring their trap. But once the developers decided that the Black Materia would be in the Temple, they decided to just have Elena get mad at the fact that Sang got attacked. I also find it strange that the soldiers don't let you leave Icicle Inn, even though there's no actual problem with you leaving the inn, it doesn't break the code in any way. It almost seems like more was supposed to happen in Icicle Inn before it was changed. The problem with my theory is that this would have had to have been really early in the development cycle because a lot of things don't make sense if the Black Materia isn't in the Temple of the Ancients. Furthermore, there's a lot of weird stuff in Final Fantasy VII's code, so it's not completely out of the question that the Black Materia was just there because they left it there. But what do you guys think? Do you think that it's a strange coincidence, or do you think that that Black Materia had some kind of significance in the plot at some point? As always, let me know in the comments below, and leave your crazy Final Fantasy VII theories so we can keep this awesome series going. And hey, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, hope you have a fantastic new year. We'll see you in the next one.